Hello. Okay, so today I'm gonna be doing a repair on iPhone 6 Plus. No touch issue. So I already troubleshoot um, the IC. It's a no touch problem, and the phone wasn't turning on before, but after charging a really long time, I was able to manage to fix the screen problem. It had lines on the screen. Um, now it's less. This is a common problem with. Um, no touch IC, it gets very severe like this. So you have no touch function, you can see here. And this sometimes there's lines like Z bar lines on the screen. Okay, so to fix this issue, I'm gonna have to just take the logic board out. I'm already pretty much disassembled uh, this iPhone, but because there's no touch, the only way to turn off the phone is to unplug the battery, like so. And I also troubleshoot this board um, with another screen just in case that it may have been the LCD that's the problem but in this case it wasn't it's, it wasn't working uh, the touch function doesn't work on either screen okay so I'm gonna put this away from now back to it okay so you can see these are the IC you want to get rid of uh, and replace. This is the touch IC. I use the same one in iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. <coughs> and I'm a little com confused like why Apple choose this. Uh, well, I think it's a tech made by uh, Texas Instrument. And is it? Hold on, let me check. Yeah, it's made by Texas, Texas Instruments. Really. That Texas Instrument. I'm not confused why Apple picked this company because they are known to have um, that integrated IC chip in the past, and obviously this one is also no good. Otherwise, it wouldn't have everybody have this similar problem. Okay, so this video is just a documentation on how to remove repo. Um, the touch IC on uh, iPhone 6 Plus. It's not exactly meant to be a tutorial. If you use it as a tutorial, that's fine. It's just, you know, FYI. I'm not making this to be a complete tutorial. Just because I'm novating it. Uh, it's mostly for documentation purposes. And demonstration purposes, but it's not too cool. So yeah, don't do this at home if you're not comfortable um, using the workstation. Even if you're comfortable using the workstation, this is still a very difficult repair because you can potentially damage the phone. Uh, this is more like a last resort kind of thing. It's not a first choice repair. So do this. I was using was a little crooked and it's good for other stuff but not so much for taking the IC up. I wonder if I can turn it off. Nope. Most of my camera will allow me to do it. Okay, when this is ready, it will become fluid, liquid almost, uh, movement, and you want to take it out in one shot, avoiding uh, any damage on the pad. Like you can see, there's no um, lifting pad on this one, because I took it out in one shot. If you play around with it, then there's a risk of um, lifting pads. Well, it's not the end of the war if you do lift a pad or two. It depends on the um, connection. Some of them are actually no connection. So, and it's a physical property of uh, left free solder, which is made mostly by tin, um, the element. So you can look it up. Tin is not a very stable um, 
not the most stable slaughter. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now, as you can see, every single connection is there. There's no missing pads anywhere, and there's no missing com components anywhere on the board. I'm being very, very careful. Um, it's extremely hard to do. <laughs> like, in, even in the beginning, when, in my first few boards, uh, when I first learning how to do this, uh, there was some difficulty as that. Uh, the parts gets moving around all the time, like the components will have to solder them back, which is pain in the butt. Uh, and also, take too much solder underneath is not good either. So, this is a new chip. So, after I'm doing so many, uh, now it just becomes easier to do. But if you're doing this for the first time, I can understand your pain. It's, it's a very difficult solder. Alright, so there's no good way to do this aside from putting it right on top, approximately where it's supposed to be. This is really not a stencil or anything that lines this up properly. Alright, so that's approximately there. And the next thing is that you want to put a lot of flux. Probably should have do this beforehand. So it does two things. Uh, one, it distributes the heat evenly, and it also is somewhat sticky. It has a little bit of. Um, well, it, it holds the chip in place. So when I solder, it doesn't fly. I mean, when I put hot air on, it doesn't fly. So you want to melt, melt the chip, uh, solder underneath, and the moment that it's reflowed, soldable, uh, the chip will move and it will get into the Karai orientation. So it doesn't need to be precisely on top, it just needs to be approximately there. Keep in mind there's also another uh, chip, IC chip that's uh, responsible for touch function. It's down here. Uh, I normally change this one first because that's usually the problem and if this one doesn't work out then we'll go ahead and change the second one. So I think this is gonna be okay. So normally this IC will move when it's uh, reflow properly. Okay so the way to check is to gently touch it a little bit. And it moves right back to its location. Don't don't play with it too much. Once you get it on, just let it be. Um, so it will move back to its location. Um, that's how you know it has a good connection underneath. And after that, you just want to heat up a little bit evenly uh, throughout the chip. And I like to call. Um, I like to leave my flux on the board for this repair because. You want to have some flux under the chip in between the connections. Uh, these flux you can buy from cyberdogllc.com. These are they are not uh, very acidic flux. The stuff you buy from Home Depot, they're acid, and the stuff you when you buy from a Chinese vendor or some other vendor, you gotta know where your flux comes from. Um, it cannot be too acidic. So if the flux works really, really well, like the one we sell by from Home Depot, the reason is because there's a lot of acid in it. Um, too much acid could eat away the board and you cannot live out on the board. For micro soldering, you really don't need that strong acid, meaning hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. Uh, when, when it heats up, it generates that. Um, that would eat through the board and it will corrode everything. Otherwise, flux is great. Uh, it's, it acts like more like a, almost like an epoxy to protect the board from uh, corrosion and yeah, if it's not acidic, it actually protect, protects the board from corrosion and it prevents the tin to form little micro bridges and shoots the chip in the first place. So hence I leave the flux on for this repair. It's kind of necessary to 
promote a longevity of the repair. And also adding some lead into the solder mix. That helps too. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna name this part one and I'm gonna make a part two video once this will cool down. Oh, by the way, once you're done with this, you want to. Um, I, I leave the board for like 10 minutes, so I'm gonna go on YouTube and do some other stuff uh, to let the, let the board cool naturally. Otherwise, you will disrupt the solder um, joints. But now it's probably okay, but it's still. A little bit hot. I want to test my glue when it's not hot. So I'll leave it alone for a little bit. Watch your YouTube video. Too. All right. See you in part two video. Ah, there. Okay. So here we are back. Phone. Um. iPhone six plus. Touch IC repair part two. So now obviously we have touch. Uh, after the IC replacement. So as you can see, that was a little corporate. Um, that's a little touch IC that didn't work. So yeah, I don't think the silver ones ever changed. Um, it's mostly the black uh, touch IC, the Texas Instrument one that has problem. And as you can see, I can get touch working again on this phone, which is pretty cool. Uh, this phone camping doesn't even turn on, so it took me a while to get it turned on in the first place. Uh, and then because it was sending for touch IC repair, um, it, it doesn't have any touch as you can see from part one video. And so what I did was that I took out the board and I replaced the touch IC. They, the solder on it is really bad. Um, and also I'm guessing inside the chip is also using an insane solder. So hence over time it shorts itself and when it does show it has it has the dials inside the integrated chip so every so often it shorts itself um, eventually it's gonna fry one of the dials inside the chip and that's when you need it absolutely need it to replace it and that's the only way to get it to work um, one way to avoid this happen again is to um, don't heat out your phone too much I guess like or like it may just have to replace it again because I'm not sure if the replacement um, test instrument chip is any different than original. It's made by the same manufacturer. Uh, hopefully, they maybe the later uh, production patch they solve this problem, but I doubt it. Um, so yeah, just don't don't keep your phone in a really tight case and don't overheat it by playing I don't know video games on it. Um, but the after you replace it, as, at least for me, because uh, I use leather solder, your problem is gonna have you're not gonna have the same kind of problem as before. Um, so I guess it's not gonna it's not gonna go bad because if you replace it, because as long as you use leather solder instead of just the original lead free solder that came with, um, you just need to mix a little lead into it. Um, so the tin solder, the lead free tin, mostly tin based solder, doesn't create little microscopic. Uh, tentacles like little whiskers um, that shorts out the chip so as long as you do that this problem shouldn't come back again uh, in the lifetime of this phone something else is gonna break before that happened so anyways um, I just want to make a really quick documentation video don't do this at home um, I'm not responsible for what you do to your phone so if you're gonna do soldering or blow hot air onto it it's at your own risk. This is for my documentation only, and this is how you how I fix the the touch screen on an iPhone six plus. Ta da! Okay, thank you for watching, and obviously I don't have the passcode for this phone, so it's gonna lock on itself. I keep going. Okay, so I'm gonna send this back to the customer, and thank you for watching. Oh, by the way, the screen is a little bit dark on the side because this is my ta ta ah, test screen. It's I use it so much, I blow out one of the LED on the screen itself, not the board. So that's a known issue with the screen. That's why it become my touch uh, test screen. Okay, thank you for watching, and I'm gonna turn off the phone normally this time. As you can see, the color also is very good on the phone. Uh, I don't know if I can... I'm not sure if I can get the brightness up. Yeah, I don't think I can. But anyway, as you can see, there's no lines on the screen anymore. It's just... 
there's no zebra line. So zebra line is, is a telltale sign of a touchscreen problem. Okay. Thank you for watching. See you in my next repair. That's the little thing you want to replace. Oh, and you can buy these on my website as well. It's the Touch IC for iPhone 6 Plus and 6. Bye.